defining requirements, sometimes abstract diagrams and text are all you need to represent business logic. In high-stakes scenarios when ambiguity isn't an option, you might need something more. In this video, you'll see how rules can be defined in IRISE to build business logic right into your simulations. Conditional logic, referred to as rules in IRISE, can be applied to a number of different elements in your simulations. One of the most common is a dynamic display. Let's start out with a couple of simple examples to illustrate how rules are defined in IRISE. In both examples, we'll enable the use of a select widget to switch out three alternate views. First, we'll link the rules directly to the select widget, then we'll modify the rules to be based on data captured from the widget. To create our dynamic display, let's start out with a section with a green background. Our first alternate view will be a duplicate section with a blue background, and the third will be another duplicate section with a red background. Our user interface will be very simple. A select widget with three selection items, green, blue, and red. In the Views panel, we'll make sure everything is named descriptively. Then we'll click the Set Rules link. In the Rules Editor, we'll choose Based on Widget and then our Color Chooser widget in the Criterion field. All that remains is to add the values to the last column, making sure each value corresponds to the view we want to display. Let's test the rules in our browser. Selecting an item in the drop-down switches the views accordingly. Using data to define rules is a similar process. In fact, we'll use the same content to demonstrate this, making some slight modifications to enable the capture of the data. First, we need to wrap the select widget in a form. Now we can send data from the widget to the clipboard. We'll call the field color choice. Finally, we'll configure a submit form action with an on change trigger. Now we can modify the rules. This time, we want the rules to be based on data. After changing that selection, we can choose our data field as the criterion. Everything else can stay the same. Note that a clipboard widget was automatically added to our canvas along with the data flow line labeled with a V. This label indicates that the data is being used to set the view criterion for the dynamic display. Finally, let's send the color choice field to the select widget so the reviewer's selection persists after form submission. Let's test our modified rules. The reviewer's experience is exactly the same. Since the examples we used here are a little abstract, let's apply this method to a more realistic scenario. Here we have a page that displays product information stored in a data sheet. The product records can be filtered with the select widgets above the tile list. We've set up two alternate views, one of which displays a message when no matches are found. Our goal is to do this automatically based on the data flowing into the tile list. If we drag the Get Products widget and release it on one of the alternate views, one of the options in the pop-up menu is Set Views Criterion. We'll choose Record and then the Products data sheet. Once again, we get a data flow line labeled with a V. Now let's configure the rules. Part of our work is done here because we already created the data flow to the display. Since the rules are evaluating whether or not data is flowing into the tile list, we'll want to change our operators to isNotEmpty and isEmpty. In this case, we can leave the last column blank. Let's test the rules. So far, so good. Let's see if we can pull up some results. The alternate views behave as expected. One more test. Back to the no matches view. You won't always need to build business logic into your simulations, but on those occasions when it makes sense, it's nice to know that you have these methods at your disposal. Thanks for watching.